Welcome to Going Ballistic with Ryan Kleckner. You're listening to episode number one. If you like what you hear, please, please, please subscribe and leave feedback on iTunes. Those will both help this podcast succeed and help others find us. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, both under Ryan Kleckner. Today, we're talking about gravity and how it affects your bullet's path on the way to the target. This episode is going to be in a lesson or a classroom format, which means that we're going to be exploring and learning about a particular topic about shooting. I hope to have future episodes with different formats to include things like product reviews and discussions of industry news and current events. Uh, Anything around the shooting sports and firearms, uh, I hope it's fair game for us. The Going Ballistic podcast is going to be produced every week, and notes about each show are found at goingballisticpodcast.com forward slash the show number. So for example, because this is show number one, you'll find links and extra info about this episode at goingballisticpodcast.com forward slash one, as in the number one. If you're looking to learn more about long-range shooting, please check out my book, The Long-Range Shooting Handbook. It's available on Amazon.com. You all have been incredibly supportive so far. I mean, the book's been out for only four months so far, and you all have purchased over 3,500 copies and keeps it in the bestseller list in its category every week. I donate 25% of the proceeds of the book to two military charities, uh, the Sua Sponte Foundation and the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. And through your generosity and support with that book so far, uh, those sales have raised thousands of dollars. So I really appreciate it. Let's get on to the show. When a bullet leaves your barrel, it doesn't travel in a straight line, no matter how fast it is. There are external forces which will immediately start to bring the bullet off of its original path. Now, the study of how this bullet behaves while in flight It's called external ballistics. Internal ballistics refers to what happens inside the firearm. And terminal ballistics refers to what happens at the target. So external ballistics is covered in chapter 10 of the Long Range Shooting Handbook, if you guys are looking for more of a discussion on the topic. So the biggest effect on your bullet's path, except for, you know, hitting something, of course, on the way to the target, is gravity. But thankfully, it's also the easiest to account for. This is because gravity is mostly constant no matter where you are on Earth. I say mostly because technically the force of gravity is different depending on where you are, but the difference is so slight we're not going to worry about it. So gravity depends on the mass of an object and how far away you are from that mass. So the further we are away from the center of the Earth, the less of an effect gravity has. This is why there's less gravity on astronauts in orbit. They're not weightless, and there's really no such thing, really, as a location where there's no gravity. But because they're further away from the Earth, the Earth's gravity has less of an effect, but honestly, it's still about 90% as strong as it is on the ground. Uh, They just appear to be floating because they're in orbit. So technically, there is a difference in the force of gravity between, let's say, the highest and the lowest points on Earth. Like at the lowest point of land on Earth, which is just around the Dead Sea, it's a little over 1,300 feet below sea level. And the highest point on Earth is a little over 20,000 feet above sea level. Now, those of you that know your geography may be saying, wait a minute, isn't Mount Everest actually a little over 29,000 feet above sea level? Well, you're right, but Mount Everest isn't the highest point on Earth. At least it's not if you're measuring from the center of the Earth. So for bonus points that have absolutely no value whatsoever, does anyone know what the highest point on Earth actually is? Well, it's Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador. If you made a globe accurate with terrain features, Mount Chimborazo would stick out further than Mount Everest. The reason Mount Everest has a higher, quote, above sea level number is because the Earth isn't a perfect circle. It's wider around the equator, which is where Ecuador is. So the sea's level is actually higher around the middle. Therefore, if you're measuring from the sea's level, there's more of a difference at Mount Everest because the sea's level is lower there. Now, who would have thought we'd be going off on a tangent like this and covering geography on the Going Ballistic podcast? Anyone that knows me, (laughs) that's who would have thought. Apologize for these tangents. I hope you learned something from them, or at least maybe makes the topic a little more interesting than being just about firearms the whole time. So, At these two extreme locations, 
there's only about a 0.4% difference in the force of gravity. And when there's other variables are considered, there's probably going to be even less of a difference between the two places. So the short of it is, it's not going to make a difference for you. At least not much of a difference as the other external factors. And honestly, if the change in gravity at these different elevations makes a difference in your ability to hit a target, then you probably shouldn't be learning from me. If you're that good, just reach out and contact me through the website so I can take lessons from you, because that's pretty amazing if you can see the difference. So the force of gravity, back on topic, the force of gravity for our purposes is it's effectively constant on Earth. And when I say constant, I, I mean the force is effectively the same no matter where you are. Gravity itself, however, doesn't make objects fall towards the Earth at a constant speed. In fact, gravity is what's called an accelerative force. You see, a steady, constant speed is a velocity. It's expressed as a certain distance that's covered in a certain amount of time. So, for example, velocity is something like 75 miles per hour, or 1,000 feet per second. That's a steady velocity. A changing velocity, meaning you're going you know, faster or slower, is an acceleration. So to say that something is accelerating means that it's speeding up. Its velocity is continually increasing. An acceleration is, is expressed as a distance covered in a certain amount of time, but squared. So, since gravity is an accelerative force, objects in free fall due to gravity fall faster and faster the longer they're exposed to gravity. And that object speed is going to continue to increase until it reaches its terminal velocity. That's the speed at which the drag from the wind resistance equals the force of gravity. So, like, as an example, um, a skydiver with their arms and feet out to the side uh, falling flat, has a terminal velocity of about 120 miles per hour. But if that skydiver tucks into a ball or they dive straight down, they can reach speeds approaching 200 miles an hour. So when the skydiver exits the plane, they increase their free fall speed from zero up to their terminal velocity because gravity is making them accelerate. Well, the force of gravity is about 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that at the end of the first second of free fall, an object is falling with a velocity of 9.8 meters per second. But at the end of the next second, it's falling an additional 9.8 meters per second faster for a total speed of 19.6 meters per second. So, why in the world does this matter to us? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Before we get into how gravity affects your bullet in flight, let's first establish that it does affect its path at all. Now, I already mentioned that when a bullet leaves your barrel, it doesn't travel in a straight line. I mean, it sure would make things a lot easier if it did, though. It would be so easy, in fact, that you, you wouldn't be listening to a podcast on external, external ballistics, nor would you be buying my long-range shooting handbook. So, I mean, at least I'm thankful it's a little difficult. But these variables that change the bullet's path are what make it challenging. They're what make long-range shooting fun to try and master. I, mean, I honestly believe that a lifetime can be spent trying to master the second biggest variable that affects a bullet's flight, wind. And as I've heard it said before, if it weren't for wind, everybody would be a sniper. <laughs> Imagine a laser beam pointing straight out of your barrel, okay? Now, pretend that's the bullet's original path. That's just a marker of where the bullet was aiming the second it left the barrel. The moment the bullet leaves the barrel, it starts to fall due to gravity. And I mean, it starts to fall immediately. Now, some of you may think that somehow the bullet's horizontal speed prevents gravity from letting it fall. Uh, unfortunately, I hear that a lot, but this just is not true. The horizontal speed of the bullet has nothing to do with how fast it falls. It might affect how much. We'll cover that later, though. But the horizontal speed of a bullet has nothing to do with how fast something falls. This is one of the two preconceived notions that some people have about a, a bullet's behavior. The horizontal speed of the bullet has nothing to do with how fast the bullet falls. All objects fall at the same speed. So a fairly common physics problem compares a bullet dropped from your hand and a bullet fired from a perfectly horizontal barrel across flat ground. So if the bullet in your hand is dropped from the same height and at the same moment as the fired bullet leaves the barrel, which bullet hits the ground first? Well, the answer is that they're going to hit the ground at exactly the same time. There's no momentum or 
other quality to the bullet flying across the ground that allows it to resist somehow the downward force of gravity. Now this is because the force of the bullet flying through the air is straight forward, while the force of gravity is straight down. And if you were to draw you know, little arrows, one forward and one down, representing the direction and magnitude of each force, which by the way would be called a vector, then those arrows would be 90 degrees from each other and therefore have no effect on each other. But if you're shooting up or down at an angle so that the forward and downward arrows were no longer 90 degrees, then you'd start to see a change in how long it takes to fall. But we're not going to get into that one for this episode. We'll cover shooting at angles later. We're just doing the basics now. So we've established that gravity affects bullets the same no matter where you are on our planet. That gravity is an accelerative force. The bullet starts to fall the moment it leaves the barrel. And that the bullet's speed is irrelevant to how fast it is falling. Well, let's talk a little bit about the bullet falling the moment it leaves the barrel. See, earlier I mentioned there are two incorrect preconceived notions that I hear about a bullet's behavior. Here comes the second one. Bullets don't rise when they come out of the barrel. It's true that the bullet flies in an arc to the target, but it is falling from its original path the entire time. So how can this be? Well, go back to thinking about that laser beam coming out of the barrel from before. If the laser beam was pointed directly at the target, the bullet would impact low. Remember, this is because the bullet starts to fall the moment it leaves the barrel. How far low depends on how far away the target is. So in order to compensate for the effect of gravity, we must angle our barrel upward. And although our scope or, or our sights are looking directly at the target, our barrel must be pointing up so that the bullet can fall off of its original path the whole way and hit where we were aiming at. So at 100 yards, the barrel is only, you know, slightly angled upward. When we shoot further away, however, we have to angle the barrel more and more to counteract the further amount the bullet is going to fall. So this is what happens when we adjust our sights. If, if I want to shoot a 500-yard target with my 308, I'd likely come up 12 minutes of angle. Now, if you don't know what minutes of angle are, don't worry, we'll cover them soon. Uh, for now, just know that it's an angular adjustment we're making in a scope or sights. So when I adjust up those 12 minutes of angle, the reticle in my scope actually goes down. It gets lowered even though I adjust it up. Well, that requires me then to raise the angle of the gun in order to get that now lower reticle back onto the target. When I raise the gun, I'm also raising the barrel to offset the greater amount the bullet is going to drop at 500 yards versus 100 yards. So therefore, our imaginary laser beam is pointed up at an angle and the bullet leaves the barrel and starts to fall away from the laser beam. It never stays on path with, nor goes above the laser beam. If the laser beam and barrel were angled, let's say, upward at a 45 degree angle, then the bullet's actual path, as it gets further and further from the laser beam, would look like an arc all the way to the target. So yes, it travels in an arc, and it gets further away from the ground, but it's falling the whole way. Now, this arc to the target that you, you can, hopefully you can imagine, it's not a perfect arc. It's not even on both ends. It's what's called a parabolic arc. It starts off gradual and then gets very steep towards the end. This means the bullet is actually falling more and more the further it goes down range. Now, there's two reasons for this. First, as we discussed earlier, the bullet's falling faster the longer it's exposed to gravity. Therefore, I mean, in the first second of flight, it's falling slower than it is in the last second of flight. But second, the other variable here, is in addition to the bullet falling faster, it's also taking longer to travel each horizontal distance. Because the bullet also starts slowing down the moment it leaves the barrel because of the drag from wind resistance. This means that the bullet travels between, let's say, the 100 and 200 yard berms on the range much faster than it travels between the 700 and 800 yard berms. It's just going slower down there. So, not only is the bullet dropping faster as it goes downrange, it actually has more time to drop downrange too. This translates into larger adjustments needed to compensate for bullet drop between those 700 and 800 yard berms than you need to do between the 1 and 200 yard. For example, back to my 308, it requires 2 minutes of angle to move between the 100 and 200 yard berms. That's it. You can hit at 100, come up 2 minutes, and hit at 200 but it requires five and a half minutes of angle 
to adjust between the 700 and 800 yard burn. Just to move 100 more yards out requires more than double the adjustment because the bullet's falling faster and it's being exposed to gravity more. Let's go back to the beginning of the podcast. Didn't I just say something about gravity that although it's the biggest effect, it's also the easiest to account for? I mean, after all of this, she might be a little lost, and that's okay. The beauty of gravity being effectively the same wherever you shoot is that you can predict what your bullet's going to do in the future. So if it took a total adjustment of 12 minutes of angle to hit that 500-yard target, then it will require the exact same adjustment of gravity for the next time you shoot that target. Kind of. (laughs) Here's the bad news. Although gravity is consistent, many of those other variables that we're going to discuss in future episodes are not. So for example, temperature and air density, just two variables, matter of fact, the easier ones to calculate for, can both change how long it takes for the bullet to reach the target. And the longer it takes, the longer it is exposed to gravity, the more it will fall, and the more you'll need to adjust in order to hit the target. All right, I hope you caught that point there. The amount a bullet falls due to gravity is directly related to time. But didn't I just tell you that a bullet's speed is irrelevant to how fast it falls? Well, I did, and both are true. A bullet falls at the same speed regardless of how fast it is traveling horizontally. But when a faster bullet reaches the target before a slower bullet, it wasn't exposed to gravity for as much time, and therefore it's not going to fall as much. All right, let me recap that. If you shoot a fast bullet and a slow bullet at the same target, the faster bullet will not drop as much as the slower bullet. But it isn't because the faster bullet is somehow resisting falling. Instead, both bullets are falling at the exact same speed. Remember, 9.8 meters per second squared. It's just that the fast bullet had less seconds to fall before it got to the target. So, what are you supposed to do with all this? Soak it in. I mean, this lesson won't make you shoot better, and perhaps I should have told you that at the beginning. But instead, I hope this lesson helps you understand the concepts involved with gravity when it comes to shooting, and it prepares you for future episodes. And, and also, by knowing what's going on, you'll be able to understand and you'll be able to take what we talk about in the future, and you'll be able to apply these these more advanced concepts to shooting. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I plan to have many more lessons and discussions about all sorts of firearms related topics in the future. If you'd like to support my efforts and help me make more of these episodes, you can subscribe to this podcast, leave feedback in iTunes, tell your friends, and of course you can purchase a copy of the long range shooting handbook. So that was the first podcast. As a celebration, I'm going to sell the next 25 copies of my book at half price through the book's website. You're going to have to use the code PODCAST, that's P-O-D-C-A-S-T, the link to the book's website where you can buy it at half price with that code for the next 25 copies is at this show's website, goingballisticpodcast.com forward slash one. Remember, only the first 25 uses count. Thanks again, everybody. I hope you tune in next time to Going Ballistic with Ryan Kleckner.